Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hyrule Canucks. Welcome to the part two of our B-roll tips and techniques, filming styles, explaining some of the cool ways to get unique shots. And I'm very happy to announce that we have a very special guest. I'm super excited to uh, share what he has in store. Brandon from Linux Tech Tips is going to be joining us in this episode, sharing some of his styles, sharing some of his techniques and tips on lighting and how he used lighting to his advantage to achieve some of the most beautiful b-roll on YouTube. Now, uh, I've been filming sort of little tips here and there as I go throughout the week, so it's a little bit inconsistent is what I'm wearing, but with the uh, awesome editing of Magic, I can uh, piece it together so it looks a bit more consistent. I always love to experiment with height, uh, either from a really high angle so it creates a very nice, unique type of look, or even from below angle. So don't be afraid to uh, move the tripod around, it, even if it takes just to set up one single shot for maybe three seconds or whatever, it's still totally worth it and you'll be happy with yourself. So a lot of people ask of how we get our slider shots and with that slight rotation that creates a really cool like effect like this. But, uh, the slide and rotate, that's all manual. Uh, I set my uh, slider, it's all level. So the carriage is actually, it's not going anywhere. As you can see, it's not like slightly slanted this way because it will make my job with the slide and rotation more difficult. And also another thing is I have an X uh, on the screen to indicate the uh, middle of the frame. And I try to keep that X on whatever part of the subject that I want to be sort of highlighted. And it gives, a, gives me a good reference in terms of if I'm sliding up too fast, if I'm not rotating them fast enough, and stuff like that. So let's uh, do this live. Recording. One of my new favorite techniques in terms of getting uh, a unique uh, movement shot within my, within my videos is utilizing the height adjustment tool. So if your tripod has that um, way where you can adjust the extra height for the tripod so you don't need to uh, do anything with your legs, this is a very cool way to utilize this uh, thing on the tripod to get a very unique shot. So I basically loosen it up and I hold it at the base and I push it down with my, you know, from this system above. So it's a controlled slide coming down all the way up and I refocus, I pre-focus and I pre-compose everything in the frame so everything is perfect and everything is uh, just smoothly in shot. And I can do it so smoothly now with this, uh, with my system because I know exactly how much pressure to apply when it's coming down that I don't even need to warp it in uh, most production. However, if the tripod that you're using does not utilize the height adjustment or is simply not available for the purposes of what I just showed you, you can use this technique to help you create very dynamic shot, uh, something that I don't see on many tech YouTubers. Uh, now, this does require a bit of uh, practice. Again, this is all manual. It's all about speed and consistency uh, and fluid motion. So let me show you what that is. So what I'm talking about here is actually using the tripod legs, maybe lowering one of the legs so it's slightly shorter than the other two and having the emotion of leaning the tripod into your subject. Uh, so something like this. either come come into or come out of it which I uh, would create different uh, environment for whatever you're trying to do and also try to play with focus if you can pull focus while you are trying to do this movement it'd be it'd be become an amazing shot uh, and obviously it takes practice most likely will take you a couple of once a couple of tries to get it perfect but at least now you have sort of the arsenal of things to do in the back of your mind when you do your b-roll so right now I'm working with this Lian Lee PC08 cube case and it's one of the most beautiful enclosures that I've ever viewed. Uh, one of the interesting parts about filming something like this, uh, aside from it looking super sweet and you know, I get the very awesome machine set up in there, but you can notice the glass panels and you can notice they are reflective. So you can play around with lighting in your environment, not just soft boxes that are lighting up sort of the ambient, uh, you know, white around the case, but uh, notice what happens when I turn my bathroom light on. So the light's coming from over there and check out what happens with the case. The case 
glass panels are reflective obviously so we get this very nice orange uh, element throughout the glass panel um, now it could be added and it could be removed based on angle of the camera right and I can also turn that off or close that door or something uh, to make the shot a little bit more interesting is this looks awesome to reveal the lighting on the case to reveal uh, the different options for what is available but uh, as you can see in this shot it looks absolutely magnificent to showcase the beauty of the glass height panels so try to use the environment that you're in to uh, you know give your uh, subject a bit extra character. One of the most interesting and oldest uh, techniques in the book on how to create a very interesting shot based on movement is reverse. So right now I can achieve a very smooth uh, slide coming down with the, the tripod as I just showed you. So take a look at it now. And it looks like a great shot, right? We're coming down, we're revealing some of the hardware, but what if we reverse that? So this is a very cool technique because it allows you to capture the shots that you would otherwise need better tools for. In my example, I can only do a smooth glide down. I cannot do the same going up. Reversing the shot of people moving is really cool to see people walking back in reverse uh, and can be applied to anything. So it's a very simple uh, method to create different shots. And also if you're trying to, if you're recycling some of the footage that you already used inside your video, it's a good way to uh, reverse the shot so it doesn't look identical throughout uh, the entire scene. One of the easiest ways to show color is, uh, well obviously aside from just focusing on certain lighting, LEDs and whatever, but what if you go out of focus? So going out of focus creates this really cool blurry bokeh that reveals color very well and there is definitely no mistaking on what color you're seeing. So in this review, I actually just pull the camera lens out of focus so that I'm comfortable with the, the bokeh ball so they're not too big and they're not too out of uh, too blurry uh, and change the color of this case so that you, the viewers can notice that the color change is actually happening without me having to actually focus on those lights. Tip number one, window light. If you do not have access to lights or you are short on setup time, find the largest window available to you and use it as your key light. Windows are a great way to get a very pleasing natural look like in this shot here. Your shadows can fall off softly for a very pleasing image and it's free. Tip number two, bouncing light. For product b-roll, I generally do not like direct hard light just because it feels a bit too unnatural and harsh. So instead, you can bounce light. This makes your light softer and gives it a much more gradual shadow like in this shot here. This leads me into tip number three, adding color. While this shot is better than it was before, it could still use another layer for that blank white wall. So I've added a light directly on the ground with a purple gel. Now you don't have to use this kind of light or even this kind of gel. Your local hardware store will likely sell colored bulbs to allow you to achieve a similar effect on the cheap. Just pick up a couple work lights and some colored bulbs and you're good to go. Thanks to Dimitri and Hardware Connects for having me. I hope you guys have found these tips helpful. So guys, thank you so much for watching and joining the part two of how we B-roll filming tips and techniques. Uh, make sure to check out part one in the description below if you haven't already. And give us a like if you want to see more content like this because I'm sure there's plenty in store of what I can share as I go along filming uh, the review videos for the Harvard Canucks YouTube channel. Huge thank you to Brandon from Linus Tech Tips for joining in this episode, giving very insightful information on lighting. And I can't wait to get more uh, guests on the show to just do, you know, their tips, just raw information for our viewers. So if you have any suggestions on who I should invite next for the B-rolling tips and techniques series, Leave them in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow for behind the scenes and how-to videos every Friday. We'll see you in the next one.